Hi there, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today we're gonna learn how to paint this beach scene from here in Tel Aviv. And now this is a scene I already painted several times, so when I get very familiar and accustomed to a scene, what I usually automatically try to do is simplify it even more. Figure out how I, how I can do more with even less. And this is what we'll attempt to try today. It's not necessarily gonna be easier for beginners, but I think it's an interesting thing to see how you can simplify a scene more and more and more and um, reduce it to its bare bones. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this one and let's get started. Okay, so starting out with the horizon line here and I just wanna avoid placing it dead in the center. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go for a bit of a lower horizon line. Gonna connect the two and luckily the, the drawing stage here is simple. Uh, I just want to place all the buildings in, so I have this couple of smaller ones and notice how uh, loosely and, and lightly I indicate them. And we're going to have a major chunk of buildings here to the right. And that's going to be the main, uh, I suppose, area of interest uh, going on like that. Now I don't even make a clear separation between the buildings, I'm going to do that uh, with the paint. Uh, you may need to detail it out a little more if you feel like uh, that's necessary for you go ahead and do that um, you know take your time and build the shapes of each individual building uh, I don't feel like I want to do that in that case plus this is a scene I painted like three or four times already so I'm quite familiar with it uh, I will have a couple of kind of um, horizontal, uh, sorry, diagonal lines for the uh, light and shadow, especially what comes from one building onto another, the shadows that they cast on one another. So this accounts for the buildings. Now we need to get the shoreline in and that's, so it moves kind of to the right third, uh, but it's still quite close to the imaginary horizon line. So that's gonna be the line for the beach. And then it kind of turns around and moves more towards us. Uh, uh, as opposed to diagonally or anything like that. So that's gonna be the beach line. Uh, we do have that kind of a dock coming out of it with this shed, maybe it's a lifeguard um, kind of structure. Uh, then we have this uh, stone or rock fence and that moves all along the beach line. So we wanna get that in here, kind of like this. I'm gonna add another layer to it just so that it's easier for me to paint it later on. It also casts a shadow because notice the light comes clearly from right to left so that's important. Now we have this big palm tree here so I'm gonna put that in quite loosely so that's like a leaf, another leaf, but I want to make sure that based on its base it's clear that it is a palm tree so that's that for this part, a couple of, uh, of the branches and the leaves and then we're gonna get all of those details later on okay with the paint I don't, I don't I'm not gonna indicate too much right now now one thing I do want to start indicating is just a bunch of people so we have one person maybe here based on the reference and the shadow moves to the left again uh, we have uh, a couple of other people and these are farther so make sure to make them smaller okay so just throw them in here and remember that you don't just do one maybe do a group because usually we hang together uh, so another one, then maybe one that's alone, one with a dog, you know, something like that. Try and get a variety of different um, formations, let's say. And all the shadows are going to be cast to the left, okay? That's something that's really important. Some may be on, in the water, you know, just try and get it to look good and varied. Uh, now I do want to indicate just a couple of waves for later on. Most of it, again, is going to be done with the paint. I don't want us, our minds to be... Um, constricted by what we placed in with the pencil so I don't put a lot. There is this big structure here but you'll see that our approach is gonna be again quite abstract and loose so we're not gonna worry too much about all of these details. So in any case now we can get, get started with uh, painting this. So here comes the first wash and I'm gonna keep uh, the sky a pure blue so I'm using a bit of that phthalo blue. It's almost over but I'll refill it uh, as soon as we're done with this stage. Um, and starting from top to bottom. Now the one thing that is important for me here uh, is to leave a couple of highlights uh, on the buildings as we get started because uh, they are lighter than the sky due to the light in many areas and I want to preserve that. Another thing I want you to note is how the sky gets a little lighter uh, the lower down we go. 
that's another thing I want to include and make sure that I um, that I express. Uh, more water, a bit more paint. You'll always run out of both, both water and paint, so make sure you recharge. And I know I get some flack for using a big brush, but again, I never said it's easy, and I never said it's simple, but I do that as means of improving my brushwork, okay? You feel free to do whatever you want, but for me, that's the ideal way to paint. Now, I'm gonna also put in already the shadows on the sides of the buildings, okay? So I'm placing them in, uh, and then now I'm moving around the buildings, but whenever there's gonna be a shadow, I will include that. Like for example, this side of the building is in the shadow, I'm including that. Um, this side is in the shadow, so I'm gonna include that as well, but still keeping things quite light. I may save up a couple of highlights here and there. Nothing too strong including this shadow, including that shadow already. I can do that in these diagonal shadows. Um, and now moving on to this side of the wash, covering this up. Uh, sh shadow on the side of this building, that building. Just make sure to have the same angle uh, because that'll, that should be even. Now that we're done with that, we can start making our way downwards. Now the thing is, there's quite a lot of green in this scene. So I will start mixing up some green here. Um, and I'll start using it. We're gonna switch between blue, green, and a bit of yellow probably. So something like this. And I'm, I'm no, I'm using quite a loose way of portraying it, but uh, that's actually what I'm aiming for here. So here we go. That's the one thing I find I enjoy more and more, the more I do. So here a bit of yellow as well. Now I want to start lightening things up, but before that, there is a bit of red uh, to be included when it comes to uh, this building here. So I will make it a little red, at least the side that's uh, in the shadow, kind of like this. And then I'll continue with this line, add a bit of green to uh, this right hand side. And I know it's a bit of an artificial green, but that's fine, kind of like this. And then I'm gonna continue, go back to uh, yellow and I'm gonna try and get a bit of a pure yellow. It's gonna take a few moments, but I'll get there. A bit of that um, uh, Verona gold ochre and a bit of the nickel azo yellow. And I'm gonna switch back to those, okay? When I'm near the uh, edge of the beach, like this. Here, I'm just gonna let that kind of do its thing. Some more yellow, a bit pure this time. Paint over everything here. This should be yellow as well. And even more than that, this part is actually starting to get red. Okay, I don't know exactly how to explain that, but there is quite a lot of, it's like the that kind of red brown uh, earth kind of thing. So I'm gonna do that here, using both the red and yellow, but one thing I do wanna get in as fast as I can is the water, okay? Uh, so that's that. Uh, I will redden it a bit more and add a bit of blue because there is there seems to be a, a bit of a purple kind of thing here at the very edge, a bit more of the red maybe, and here we go, purple. And now I'm gonna start placing in the actual water, a bit darker than the sky, okay, so something like that. And I'll probably, I may leave just a couple of highlights, but not too much, because um, most of the water is kind of, it's not white completely, so I don't necessarily wanna leave too much paper white, that is. Uh, I will later on leave a couple of more striking highlights, but that's about it for the first wash. Something like that. Everything mixes together nicely. A bit of green, I would say, in the deepest parts of the, the water. I'm using a, um, undersea green actually here, and a bit of the phthalo, like that bit of let's darken it here and that should do the trick 
bit of wet and wet here and there and we're gonna let this uh, dry and then come back with the next wash so now comes the crucial part of the painting we're gonna define all of the shapes like everything from um, the buildings and the people and the beach and the coastline uh, so this is where you really have to uh, start paying attention to the shapes uh, a little more uh, and I'm gonna start with some very light shadows um, on the buildings here and starting to build those shapes up um, as buildings because right now it's just a bunch of you know shapes and I'm gonna start very blue uh, in the very distance now one thing I always recommend my students is when you're just starting out a new wash keep things as close together as you can and take your time with them because if it's a smaller area then you have time to react you have time to change things around uh, you can do things fairly easily uh, because it's a smaller area you don't have to worry about your edges or anything drying on you so it's just a very good way to go uh, so I'm gonna start like that uh, still quite blue and pale for this wash um, but you can already tell that these are buildings and you can see that they have a very defined shape there's perhaps a bit of a taller structure here like so then we have this building that also has this section up top um, and you can start adding some details for the windows I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm still um, I'm saving that for a few more uh, closer buildings okay uh, I think it's important to save these details to the things that are closer to us and uh, for which you can actually see some more details but I am warming it up just a little bit still quite neutral by the way so not a lot of um, you know vibrant colors or anything like that now here with this building that's significantly closer I'm gonna add a bit more uh, blue to it and a bit more red as well a bit more yellow still neutralized but a little darker this time and I'm just gonna plop it in here like that like this uh, now a cool thing you can do just to add a bit more interest to it by the way uh, is to just start connecting this shape to the front part of the building okay uh, and this is what I said I'll wait to do so here I'm doing a bit of that now and I'm also adding a section up top uh, now here there's an imaginary shadow I made up uh, I'm going to put that in as well, so it kind of is being cast by the building next to it. That will help us create a bit of an interesting uh, shape between the buildings. Then I'm going to do the same for this one with the same angle. For this building I'm going to warm things up a little. It's not really warm uh, in the reference photo, but I want to add some interest, so I'll do that. The entire left side is indeed in the shadow. Then as we go downwards, we connect it there okay now I think the left section is a little too uh, dark I'm actually gonna just add some water to it I'm gonna use a different brush for that so this one and uh, I'm just gonna water it down a little I don't I don't usually do that but I think it'll help okay and then we'll create these weird blossoms but it will also lighten things up a bit and while I'm at it I may also uh, blend some of that edge um, and it's still luckily a bit wet so I can actually do that oh you know what let's use the other softer bristle brush here this one and just use it to slightly blend that edge in now you can see there's a, even more of a smooth transition okay and now going back to this section because I need to work fast to make sure it doesn't dry I'm gonna blue things up around the top so a bit more blue and this is a very strong blue with phthalo blue so you have to be a little careful with it and this goes for the some of the details up top here a bit of that I have an alarm clock but in any case moving on with the process now while this is still wet I can start injecting some paint inside there as well so what I want to do is just get a bunch of and this has to be a little darker because we're doing wet and wet so a bit of darker paint and I'll just darken these areas you see in between uh, the buildings where it's a little darker and this gives it a little more depth now while I'm at it I can use this very same brush to start adding a bit of details here top of the building and then here this already becomes a little more important so I'm starting to add these details on the building itself 
there is this smaller building here, a little lighter. Just trying to narrate everything I'm doing. It's not easy, by the way. I don't know why today I'm a little out of focus in that regard, but I'm doing my best. And hopefully it still uh, comes through. There is a shadow cast by this building here that's in the shadow, by the way. And then we have uh, another part of a building here, like that. I'm going to leave this highlight because it looks nice and connect it to a bit of a uh, darker shape, gray, or even even orangey, just a bit of orange uh, of this building here. And I'm going to leave a highlight kind of like that, just to add some interest. And a couple of details here up top. There's a bit of a weird structure. I'm just combining a couple of buildings here together that I see, because I want to, I don't know, add some make it look like special buildings I guess so here we go top of this building here I will darken this building up but I need to use a lot of red for that because that building is really warm so a bit of red for this one and this kind of thing here as well I'm gonna go over the building I previously uh, painted there I don't really need it anymore like so this shouldn't be here get rid of that and hopefully that will kind of make sense. Here are some windows on the right side of the building. Really taking a rather loose approach here. And uh, hopefully that works out. Um, I'm, I'm trying to experiment with a bit of looser ways of getting the same effect. It does mean that I have some growing pains. So not all of my shapes connect the way I want them to. I'll have to apologize uh, about that. Because I'm trying to again push the boundaries of what's possible and what I can indicate with fewer details um, Plus again, this is a scene. I already painted a couple of times So that makes me uh, even more prone to wanting to simplify the process. Okay, that's pretty much uh, the best explanation there uh, So now we're kind of done with the buildings in the background I'm gonna allow this to kind of blend to the right. What I want to add now is that wall it's rather warm, so a bit more red and yellow, kind of like that. And I'm just going to start placing it in so it comes from, and it's really in the context, you know, it may appear a little cooler, a little warmer, a lot of it is in the context of the surrounding, but, you know. So this goes here and then it goes back through here, back through here. And finally, let's blue it up a little bit as it comes closer to us. Comes around like that. Change the shape here just a bit so it makes more sense. And then I'm going to add the shadow right under it. A bit of a risk touching the existing wash, but that's fine. Um, and yeah, this is it for this part. Now I want to darken up the at least the left section of the ocean because it needs to be a little stronger and a little bluer like pure blue okay uh, so let's see here just a bit of that it may seem very dark but it's actually going to be okay so don't worry about it too much and now i'm going to add a bit more water and continue pulling this downwards kind of like that and as i get closer and closer i'm just adding a bit more water now and that'll hopefully kind of blend it with the rest of the uh, ocean. What I will do is add a bit more green. And I'm just going to add a bit of that under the waves. But not too much. You don't need much here. And maybe a bit next to the coastline. And I'm going to show you a cool trick in just a moment on how to make this whole, uh, the sea look better and, and more convincing. Or just to add a nice little effect. Uh, near the end. Okay, but this is pretty much it for this part. Uh, I will add a bit of dark, uh, darker green here with a bit of red as well. Keep it muted kind of like this. There is a bit of grass or grass patches here that I do want to indicate, but then there's also the red and uh, orange parts. So I'm going to do that as well for some areas, not for everything while leaving a highlight around that fence, okay? Kind of like this. And we're pretty much done with this section here. Now we can add, um, we'll wait with this because there's the, the water is still wet, but I'll add this shack for the lifeguard. 
So just a bit of dark paint here. Quite a loose and, and free approach here. I'm gonna grab a bit of red and I'm gonna start indicating some people very gently, okay? It's just kind of the heads. And then a bunch of them, I'm gonna continue with the red. And hopefully that'll make sense. Someone in the C there. Then let's get some blue and a bit of anything we have here on the palette and just add some of their bodies like so. A little larger for those who are closer to us. There's a dog here, as I mentioned. Now I wanna get uh, a bit of yellow. That's gonna be very strong, pure yellow. Just so that I get some interest in the crowd of people here. Like so. And lastly, we're gonna add something really important in just a moment. Uh, a bit of red for these guys as well, guys or girls. And now we're gonna add their shadows. So the shadows are kind of mimicking the uh, warmth of the sand and the, the beach. So I'm gonna use a bit of an orange for the shadows and they're all gonna move in the same direction towards the left like that, okay? And that's really important to get that feeling of uh, correct light and shadow. So here we go, a bit to the left, a bit to the left, 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 left. This part's starting to dry, but I'm gonna go back to it in just a moment. First, let's do the palm tree. So palm tree, lots of yellow. I'm gonna start actually with a bit of a yellowy green. I'm gonna pull out of this trunk a couple of leaves. And like so, then add a bit of blue to that. And keeping it rather, I don't even wanna say abstracted, but simple, so that you can immediately tell what you're looking at. Sometimes it's not about abstraction, but actually simplification. Um, you could say these are two sides of the same kind, but I think they're a little different. Now, the more we get to the base, I'm gonna add a bit more red. We're gonna orange it up, essentially then a bit of blue to darken it. And we've got ourselves a palm tree. Now the, the bases of the leaves are very dark and we wanna get that effect in. So this is dark, this is dark, this is quite dark. Some of the branches are quite dark, like that. And then in just a moment, we're gonna add some cool effects that are gonna make this um, a little better looking and add some highlights. Now for this um, little dock here in the shack, I'm just gonna add it very gently. And it does have a couple of posts on it, so I'm gonna indicate them again very lightly, like so. I'm gonna add a bit of shadow onto uh, the shack to the left side as well, like that. Um, what else is interesting? Oh yeah, we have to add the shapes here of the rocks, so just a bit. With a bit of a drier brush, I'm just getting rid of most of the paint on the brush. Like so, using the towel as well, and hopefully that'll leave me with a bit of a drier brush here, a bit of this here, this there. And hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and I think with that we're done. We do have this shadow here that I'm just gonna plain ignore. Um, and I can now just start adding a bit of trees here and there. I know I darkened the back section quite a bit. That's still fine and it's still gonna show. And I'm, I may add some details with pure opaque paint as well. Let's wet the brush a bit. I'm not doing anything here. So kind of like this, help keep the paint moving a bit more. A whole bunch of trees. I may have gone a little too dark even with some of the sections here, but that's fine. Like so there are a bunch of people here at the back as well and all throughout the beach. Uh, so sometimes you may want to indicate that. Very abstractly once again. I'm gonna add a couple of dry brush windows to this building here. Now here comes another interesting part. I'm gonna start adding shadows here. Again, I need to get rid of a lot of paint here just so that I can place it with a relatively dry brush. Still not quite 
and dry. Let's try now. So now you can see the paint barely moves. I'm gonna need to get some more paint. Here we go. Now this is a bit of a better combination. And I'm just adding a couple of details on some of the buildings. Not too much. The buildings at the back, maybe just a little, but it's not really necessary. Um, and I think with that we're done with this part. Now let's bring out some uh, opaque paint and my white gel pen. So we'll start with the gel pen. Now I don't always know exactly what I'm gonna do with it. I just kind of use it wherever I feel it's necessary. So I do feel like there are quite a bit of highlights here at the back and I'm kind of squinting my eyes and trying to figure out what their shape is and if I can simplify them and turn them into something simpler. So um, a bit of, you know, maybe electricity or light poles. I do see quite a lot of light poles. Over at the beach, we have a couple of highlights as well. This could be also, um, you know, the parasols or something like that. So I'm just kind of putting it in there and that really helps in enhancing the sense of whatever you're looking at is real and has more details. Now I'm gonna add a bit of a highlight here on the shaded side of the building. So that hints that there is a part of the wall that moves around uh, or rather changes direction. Not necessarily moves around now we have a couple of signs here so this thing this thing a bit of a highlight uh, I will also add some highlights over the people like that just helps to better separate them from the environment not a must really more important when you actually see the their shape up close and you have to differentiate them from a dark background but this can help as well uh, now over at, the, at the, the beach itself I will add a couple of highlights here kind of indicating at the waves there is quite a lot of highlights there and if I just add a couple of wavy lines you'll see I get a nice little effect of, uh, of the light reflecting. Uh, now you have to be careful not to overdo it but it does feel good to see uh, this kind of thing. Now the waves kind of go at the back here. There's a lot of foam, a lot of things like that going on. And I wanted to make sure that I capture. And I think this is pretty much it I don't want to overdo it but I think the message gets across and you can probably can't really see it all that well uh, through the camera but uh, I think it made quite a big of a difference and lastly we do have hmm, here as well maybe just a bit of that a little thicker and next to the edge of the beach yeah and now we'll, we'll do the same for the palm tree so a bit of uh, highlights here and there just to differentiate some parts of its shape, maybe even the leaves that fall over it or drape over it or catch the sunlight. Some of them catch the sunlight directly. Uh, but the thing that will really do the trick is I'm gonna use some opaque paint. I have two that I like, the Cadmium Yellow Deep and the Hansa Yellow Medium, which I use more often. And so I'm gonna show you, I'm just using it uh, purely out of the tube. You don't even need the tube at this point. I have enough of it on the cap I'm just gonna get some of that paint here. Let's get some from the tube as well. It's a paint that tends to spill out the moment you open the tube. So I'm just gonna add a couple of touches here. Not too much. Again, just a couple of touches. And I think together with the white gel pen so far, it worked really nicely for me. Now there are a couple of leaves going down from the taller branch or taller, you know, taller group of leaves. I'm gonna get that in as well. That effect. And I think this is pretty much it. You don't want to overdo it uh, at all. Now with the tree we're done, I'm gonna add a couple of these to the people as well. Uh, maybe even it could be like a shirt for a person or I just find that these small details help to enhance the sense of light. Especially this one. Notice how it made it pop but in a good way, not in a I don't think at least in a cliche way, but more in, a, in an interesting way. Uh, and I think with that we're done. We're really one step away from overdoing and overworking. So I'm gonna stop here. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm gonna add my signature and everything and we're gonna wrap it up. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the last part with the gel pen, the white gel pen, uh, as well as me using some opaque paint uh, straight out of the tube, which is fun. I like to do that from time to time. 
Uh, I'm not too worried about using different materials with the painting as long as the painting works. Uh, but I am very pleased with how these waves and ripples turned out and also the transition from blue to slightly green to slightly red and then to the yellow of the beach. And as you can see, it's really fun to simplify a scene and um, make it easier to paint in some regards. And I hope you enjoyed seeing that together with me. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe and hit the bell button. That means a lot to me. It actually means you'll get notifications for new videos because YouTube does not show my videos always. Uh, that's at least what I hear from other people. So I'll be very grateful if you do that. And I will see you again in another vid real soon.